As many of you know, Netflix and the Duffer Brothers will be coming together to continue telling the Stranger Things story through their new show, The First Shadow. They just dropped a new trailer for it that we're going to take a look at today because honestly, it teases some really big things for The First Shadow as well as Season 5. For any of you who have been living under a rock recently, The First Shadow is going to take place in Hawkins, Indiana in 1959. Yes, if that date sounds familiar, you're not crazy. In Season 4, this is the year the Creel family moves to Hawkins. This show will follow Henry Creel as he arrives at school for the first time and realizes that the fresh start his family wanted for him isn't going to be so easy. Surprisingly enough, they've already announced that they'll be following a young Hopper, Joyce, and Bob Newby as they're most likely in their senior year at Hawkins High. I am so excited we're getting high school era Jopper and you know everyone's going to be happy to see Bob back. Not only are we going to be following our favorite adults from Hawkins finishing up high school as well as the Creel family moving to Hawkins, but they're also teasing really hard that this show will be taking us back to the beginning of the Stranger Things story and will hold the key to the end of Stranger Things. This is crazy. I guess they know they won't have enough time in season 5 for all the flashbacks needed to cover Henry Creel's origin story as well as how he gets his powers. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Michael J and I'm going to be making fun Stranger Things videos all the way up until they release season 5, whatever year they choose to do it. So make sure you're subscribed. Not only do we have the first Shadow prequel show dropping in November, we're also getting an Eddie Munson book. It's going to be so good to see him back as well. I think I think only 12% of you guys watching the video right now are actually subscribed to the channel, which is crazy. Go down and break that subscribe button's arm as hard as you can. It deserves it. Now, before we look at the trailer they released, I actually wanted to take a look at the teaser they posted before this. To be honest, I didn't think that much of it when I first saw it, but after this new trailer dropped, I went back and rewatched it and found a ton of interesting patterns. The whole thing about the first shadow is that it's a prequel story, right? They're going to be juggling between Henry Creel's origin story and a bubbly high school story following young Hopper Bob and Joyce. Obviously, the main focus will be Henry's origins and what will set him on the path to becoming Vecna, but in this teaser they posted, they recap Rewind starting at the end of season 4 with Hawkins up in flames and they go back chronologically all the way to the night Henry Creel murdered his family. Well, actually, the only shot before that is one of Henry Creel's first illusions. He can make them see what he wants. It's part of his trance he puts people in. Look at every time he was close to Max. He made her see him as his mother when she thought she was saying goodbye for the last time. He made her see the clock at Hawkins High. He made Chrissy see the clock in the forest. When Vecna takes over Max at the finale, and then as it gets more twisted, he reveals himself, using Lucas as an illusion to scare Max. Henry can make people see their worst nightmares, what they're afraid of, their deep dark secrets that haunt them when they go to sleep at night. I know they kind of breezed over this specifically in season 4, but if you were quick enough, you may have caught it. But for those who didn't, while Henry was monologuing to Eleven in the finale, he mentions that as a child, he learned he could reach into people's minds, into their memories, and as he practiced using this new power, he started peering into his parents' memories and learned that they were not the good people they both portrayed themselves to be, and that they actually had done horrible things. With his father, he shows him a rocking baby carriage in the fireplace in their living room with screaming coming from it. In another flashback, we learn that Victor fought in the war and accidentally ordered an airstrike on a civilian building, killing some of his troops as well as civilians. For his mother, they actually never never showed us what she did wrong. We have no idea why Henry thinks his mother is a bad person. All that we see is Henry showing his mother hundreds of black widow spiders coming out of the bathtub that scare her. Now, as he was practicing reaching into people's minds to show them their nightmares, their father thought it was a demon cursing them for their sins. But Henry said that somehow his mother knew it was him and took him to Dr. Brenner to get him either fixed or locked away. But after she did that, that's when Henry decided to break free from her and kill them all. It's really really interesting that the recap rewinds to the shot of the spiders coming out of the clock and not when the Creels move to Hawkins, which technically is the earliest chronological shot in the Stranger Things story, but let's take a closer look at this. So it's pretty quick, 24 seconds, but it has a lot to unpack. They skip over a lot of things and there's a couple scenes that only last a couple frames. Let's look at it in reverse though so we can see in chronological order which scenes they are choosing to highlight and why. Now like I was saying, first we have the Black Widows coming out of the grandfather clock, both huge elements of Henry's story. We'll learn more about the clock in season 5, but for now, as much as we know, the clock was the first thing young Henry Creel used his powers to manipulate, and that's where he discovered his powers. He uses this clock to scare his victims and lure them into a trance state when he takes them over, kills them, and absorbs them, and in turn becomes stronger. The spiders he relates to for all the creepy reasons, but the weirdest thing about this shot is that I think it's the only one in this entire recap that is not in chronological order. This shot, as you can see in the reflection of the clock, is actually from the forest scene 
with Chrissy in episode 1 of season 4. Why on earth would this be the only shot out of order? Now personally, I was thinking that with all the other Black Widows in the promotion for the first Shadow, and with how big a part of his origin story they play, they're obviously going to be included in the show a lot. They were also super vague with showing his mom her nightmare by only showing him doing the spiders from the bathtub. So they might have just wanted to use a shot of the spiders and the clock together to signify the start of his powers, but also the first nightmare he showed his mother. Because that is what made her call Dr. Brenner, which made Henry get mad and kill his mom, which is the next scene. This is another important moment in Henry's origin story since this was the first time he took a human life. We know he practiced on animals a lot as he was developing his powers, but combined with the rage of his mother trying to get him locked away, he became powerful enough to kill his mother. He also points out that with each kill he gets stronger and that they become a part of him, which will become important in season 5 with saving Max, which we'll talk about later. After that is actually the shot of them moving to Hawkins and stepping into their house for the first time while they're all still happy. It's almost like some of these moments in his origin story are grouped together so the individual scenes are a bit out of order, minus the Chrissy clock scene, but everything else is important moments from his time in that house. After this, we see Henry as an orderly at MK Ultra smiling at 11, as well as him showing her his 01 tattoo for the first time. Kind of weird that him getting his tattoo with Brenner wasn't here, I guess that's not as significant as meeting 11 for the first time, which in its own is the next big step in Henry's path to becoming Vecna. His time as a child at MK Ultra is just a blur. We know nothing about it, but that Brenner was so eager to study young Henry Creel and make more of him, that eventually 11 and the others were born. It would seem that Brenner was trying to perfect the powers in the children or make each one more powerful than the last, all the way up until 11, who was so powerful she brought the whole thing down. But it seems like at one point Brenner saw Henry as too old to train or become more powerful, so he put Soteria in his neck, that little pill-looking thing that weakens Henry to the point of having no powers and then discarded him and moved on to his new toys to play with. So him meeting 11 for the first time as 01, his hidden identity, was a huge moment because from there he was able to befriend and manipulate 11 into eventually helping him escape and kill all the other children. I'm kind of surprised he didn't stop and kill Brenner. It seems like all the kids tried to fight back, but not going back and finishing off Brenner is still a mystery. He's hated him from the first time his mom ever took him there. That's what sparked his killing spree in the first place. Now after this, there's a clip of Brenner getting ready in the morning and then him at work training 11, his star pupil, the chosen one. I mean, without Brenner training 11 and pushing her to use her powers as much as he did, there's a good chance Henry would still be stuck there if it wasn't for her. If you're enjoying the video and our deep dive behind why these scenes are important to Henry's story, feel free to subscribe. It's totally free and it really helps the channel. I'll be making more Stranger Things videos soon that you're not going to want to miss, so make sure you're subbed. Next is probably the most important moment of the Stranger Things story. We see Henry and Eleven in a standoff right after he tried to persuade her to join the dark side with him. Thank goodness young Eleven had enough of a moral compass to know he was evil and fight back. She eventually defeats him and her finishing move literally opens up a tear in time and space, creating the upside down that Henry gets banished to. This is the next chapter of Henry's life. This started in 1979 and goes all the way up until season one in 1983. This was his time in the upside down with no contact to the real world. This is up until that first time that Eleven reached out and made contact with that Demogorgon. She used her psychic abilities Brenner was pushing her to use and in turn opened up a portal to the upside down. Now after this we get a shot of Henry with his creation of the Mind Flayer which he then uses for the next two seasons to terrorize the children of Hawkins and try to take over Will, which we need to talk about before season 5 comes out because that will be very important. But part of me wonders if Henry used the Mind Flayer as a way to comfort him in this new place while he was all alone because he talks about how finding the spiders in the vents was weirdly comforting to him as a child. Did he create the Mind Flayer in the Upside Down to be his emotional support animal? Is the Mind Flayer just a big old doggo to him? Maybe. Next is a joint shot of the boys in season 1 once they first brought Eleven back to Mike's house trying to figure out who to tell and what to do with her. And then the shot of her showing them her Eleven tattoo, revealing that there is more mystery to her than it seems. I think these were included to show the start of Eleven's life outside of MK Ultra for the first time. Because after Henry gets banished to the Upside Down, his sole purpose is to escape, to make it back to the real world, and kill Eleven or try to get her to join him again. And then after that, there's only a split second of Joyce holding the Christmas lights trying to talk 
talk to Will in the Upside Down. They're trying to be sneaky with this one, but we already know that Will is going to play a huge role in Season 5 with Henry. This is probably the first time that Will popped up on Vecna's radar. I'm sure Vecna was able to sense from here that Will was also different, just like he was. And this is where Vecna's efforts to use Will as a host in the real world start. Pretty sneaky, slipping that in there. But next is the shot of Eleven hugging Mike and Dustin at the quarry after the bully almost kills them. Now this is important because it was the biggest use of Eleven's powers up until this point since leaving Brenner and MK Ultra, which I'm pretty sure just like Henry, each time she uses her powers and reaches a new ceiling, she too gets stronger. She's not killing people, but this is growing her powers, I think. And then right after this, they show the van flip scene. Now I think this, minus banishing Henry to the upside down, is the actual biggest use of her powers ever, and just shortly after the bully's arm break too. But going from squeezing Coke cans at Hawkins Lab to this is a huge jump in her powers. She, at this point, for the first time since throwing those guards around at Hawkins Lab, is using her emotions to fuel her powers. And with this instance, she's fighting for more than survival, but to protect her friends as well. This is the moment she really sets into her journey to grow her powers further, which will eventually be the one thing that stands in the way of Vecna taking over the world, starting with Hawkins. And then we see the drawings Will did of his nightmares of the Mind Flare. After he came back from the Upside Down in Season 1, he was different. He was connected to Vecna. Vecna knew he was a suitable host and used the Mind Flare to eventually possess Will and talk to Eleven through him. This is the start of his aggressive attempts to return to the real world and honestly where everything starts to go downhill for Will. Now he is Vecna's primary target and possibly the key to Vecna being released from his imprisonment in the Upside Down. Next is a scene at Hawkins Lab where Owen shows Hopper the giant mother gate that is still open from Season 1 that is now letting demo dogs come to Hawkins. This is the next step in Vecna getting closer to coming back to the real world. Each one of these scenes so far is a vital moment along Henry's journey to where we see him at the end of season four. Now, this next shot is one shot that I genuinely can't think of why they included this in the recap of Henry's life, but this one just feels random. Jeez, yeah. This is a shot from season two, which the writers have recently been telling everyone to go rewatch because there's something hidden in it that will be important in season five from the moment Dustin reaches out to Steve to help him with his dart problem. He's growing too big for Dustin to handle on his own, so he calls Steve over to check it out, but by the time they get there, Dart's tunneled his way out of the basement and is running all over Hawkins. I mean, this does happen right before Owens takes Hopper down to show him the mother gate and right before they start torching the vines and they realize that Will is the host for this virus which is Vecna, but still, not sure why the shot of Steve and Dustin was in this. After this, it shows Eleven actually closing the Mother Gate, stopping Vecna's first actual attempt to come back into the real world with the entire Mind Flare. This was another huge loss for Henry and another huge win for Eleven. Now, the next group of shots is basically a recap of Season 3. Some have direct ties to Vecna's efforts, and some feel a little random more for the sake of the recap of the season. It starts out with a shot of the Starcourt Mall, the location of the next portal that the Russians are trying to use to get into the Upside Down, obviously important, followed up by a shot of Steve and Dustin bribing Erica with a bowl of ice cream. I mean, I know Erica is awesome and all, but until now there's not been a super direct link between her and Vecna. This group is the one that discovers the Russians trying to open the portal, so maybe it's just prefacing their efforts. Next is a shot of Joyce grabbing Hopper's hand. I mean, Jopper is of course important to the main Stranger Things story, but again, not necessarily to Vecna himself. Unless we will learn otherwise in this play. Wait, maybe that's why they put it in here. Young Hopper and Joyce, he's got to get bullied by someone, right? Actually, I hope it's not them because that'd be sad, but it might be. But also, these are the two that eventually stop this new portal under the mall from being opened up. After this is a solo shot of Max in the mall, which I wonder if they're trying to imply that Vecna had his sights on Max from this point on. I mean, he directly killed her brother with the meat puppet and then used her feelings from that to haunt her the following year so he could kill her and open up a massive portal to enter Hawkins. And then straight after this, it cuts to the moment Eleven removes the parasite that dug inside of her during the fight with the meat puppet at the cabin. Even though she removed the physical piece that was inside of her, Vecna came out on top, completely stripping Eleven of her powers for the next year. And then right after this, it's literally the meat puppet killing Billy. This is the trauma that lets Vecna target Max and complete his portal plans in season four. There's a lot of VHS tape distortion all over the clips, but this is the first one to flip the 
clip upside down. Part of me wonders if this is them saying Billy lives on in the upside down through Vecna's nightmares that he uses to haunt Max with, or maybe that it was Vecna himself in the upside down controlling the meat puppet right here. He's the one that took over and directly killed Billy from the upside down. We will have to eventually spend more time with Max in season 5 as they try to save her from Vecna's mind. I wonder if we'll see Billy again, or any flashbacks to Billy's death. Because after this, it cuts straight to Vecna first putting Max in a trance at Billy's grave, immediately skipped over the other three kills and went straight to Max, the most important one. Vecna left Will with some powers after he escaped his grasp. I wouldn't be surprised if Max gets some slight powers after she's rescued. Next is Vecna, literally in his Mindscape realm where he keeps all of his victims. I'm really excited to see them explain the whole they're not gone, they're all up in my head thing. I wonder if it's just trophies in his trophy room, or if there's a part of them that actually lives on or can come back. I'm sure they'll explain it more in season 5, just hold on a couple years. After this is the shot of Hopper and Joyce's embrace after Hop beheads that Demogorgon with that awesome sword. This is right after the Russians shot up the case for the black particles they captured from the Mind Flare and it possesses the frozen demo dogs, letting them escape and eat all the Russians. I mean, maybe they'll revisit the Russian prison and whatever ties they have to the Mind Flare, opening portals in season 5, but I think this might just be hold on to your loved ones because everyone's about to die. And then we have Eleven at the deprivation tank at Project Nina with the TVs that Brenner uses to reawaken her powers. This is a big sad day for Vecna, now that his only competition got her powers back, literally the one thing stopping him from taking over the world. Our last hope has returned. I would love to see a dark what if story where Eleven is manipulated into saying yes to join Henry Creel and they go off together and he trains her to become even more powerful and they use their dark powers to destroy the world and build a new one or something. I feel like that'd be cool. Next, what feels like an honorable mention is Eddie Munson himself in the Upside Down fighting the demo bats. Now, I know this is his death scene, and I'm sure all of you have heard that Eddie Munson cast the vampire theory by now. If you haven't, go watch this video. I explained it all. It's basically a pretty believable theory on how Eddie could survive his death and return in season 5. Now, that theory, along with the behind the scenes photos of his body getting wheeled away on a stretcher that we never saw, plus the announcement of an Eddie Munson book that is being written by the same writer who's writing season 5, and now including Eddie's death in the story of Vecna can easily tell us that Eddie's role in this story is not quite over yet. We are getting more Eddie, the question is, how much more? Because after highlighting Eddie's death, they show present day Hawkins with the gaping portal wide open across all of Hawkins, the moment we left off on and the moment we will hopefully pick back up on in a couple of years. So many cool hidden moments in this that means so much to Henry and his journey. I can't wait for the first shadow, I'm really hoping they adapt it into a book or something because I'm not sure a three hour stage play will be enough. Still, I'm really excited for it. Tell me in the comments what you think the key to the end will be and go watch this Stranger Things video next. I will see you in the next video. Peace.